in audio, we can classify analog signals by their level. As such, we can have mic level, aux level, line level, and loudspeaker level. All of these signals are low voltage with the exception of loudspeaker levels. Line levels are usually in the range of 1.3 volts RMS. Auxiliary levels are much lower than this at 0.3 volts RMS. And mic levels are even lower at 2 millivolts or 0.002 volts RMS. To put it in perspective, a AA battery is 1.5 volts. This is 750 times the level of a microphone signal. Transporting these low-level signals is not that easy. We need to use proper cables and wiring configuration so we can achieve long distances with minimal signal loss and degradation in frequency response. To understand this a little bit better, we first need to review some electronic circuit concepts. In every circuit, we'll have a source and a load. The source is the piece that provides energy into the circuit. It can be active or passive. For instance, an amplifier is an active source, while a microphone is a passive source. It is not plugged into the wall to generate energy. It can be represented as a voltage source, and it will have an internal impedance. The load, on the other hand, is a unit that receives energy from the circuit, and it can be represented as an impedance. Sources and loads are connected with cables. In audio, we talk about impedance, not resistance. The difference is very simple. Impedance, as well as resistance, is the opposition to the passage of current when a voltage is present. But impedance has two components, resistance and reactance. In DC circuits, we only talk about resistance. Reactance only occurs in AC circuits, and it can be capacitive or inductive. Both impedance and resistance are measured in ohms. When we represent circuits, we can say that the source is an alternating source of energy, and it will have an internal resistor. Without anything connected to the terminals of that source, there is no current flowing through that circuit. In this case, impedance is infinite. And if we were to measure the voltage across those two terminals, it would be the same as the alternating source. If we connect those two terminals with a piece of wire, we are creating a short. In this case, we will have maximum current flow between those two points. The voltage difference between those two terminals is going to be zero. If we put a load of certain impedance, some current will flow through that load. We can also measure the voltage across the terminals, and we're going to see that there's some voltage difference between those two points. It's not going to be as large as the alternating source, but it's not going to be zero either. The amount of energy transferred to the load depends on the ratio between the load impedance and the source impedance. If those impedances were the same value, about half the energy generated by the source will be transferred to that load. In reality, when we connect audio components, there is cable between them. That cable is going to add some resistance to the circuit, increasing the load that is seen by the source. This impedance is going to increase with distance, and it will induce certain signal losses. Cables also have capacitance and inductance that can vary with distance, and this will affect the signal bandwidth and frequency response. In general, when we're pairing sources to loads, we can have three different ratios. If the source impedance is larger than the load impedance, most of the power is going to be consumed by the source. This may damage the source. For instance, if we short the output terminals of an amplifier, we can damage the power supply of that amplifier. The other case would be that the source impedance is equal to the load impedance. In this case, we have maximum power transfer. This is needed whenever we need to move things, when we need to create work. If we need to move something with a motor, we need maximum power transfer. The same applies to loudspeakers. We need to move the heavy voice coils, so we need maximum power transfer. The last ratio is that the source impedance is going to be less than the load impedance. In this case, more power is transferred to the load, so we have higher efficiency. This will allow us to use longer cables or splitting signals without any problems. As a rule of thumb in professional audio, we want the load impedance to be about 10 times the source impedance. We can divide audio gear in three large groups depending on their impedance. Low impedance, medium impedance, and high impedance. Low impedance usually ranges between 150 and 600 ohms. These type of devices will support any cable length between them. Medium impedance ranges from 600 ohms and 10 kilo ohms, or 10,000 ohms. And high impedance is anything above 10,000 ohms. With high impedance devices, we should not use cables longer than 20 feet. The reason is that longer distances will increase the impedance and will cut high frequencies. For loudspeaker signals, the impedance ratio is a little bit different. Since we need to move the heavy voice coil, loudspeaker impedance should be equal or slightly higher than the amplifier's minimum rated impedance. That is because we need maximum power transfer between the amplifier and the loudspeaker. When calculating connections between amplifier and loudspeakers, we need to consider the cable impedance. 
As a rule of thumb, the cable impedance should be less than 5% of the load impedance. That is to minimize losses on that cable. Higher loudspeaker impedances or longer cables will reduce the amplifier's capacity to deliver power. 